So now that brings me to Dragunov and Tony D. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we've talked about all of the storyline reasons that uh, I could not possibly care about this match. But uh, this also suffered from a lack of heat. Yes. And I think the, and and actually I'm going to, I'm not defending what they did with Tatum. Okay. But I do want to say something. This is a WrestleMania weekend NXT takeover event. Okay. Tons of people there. I believe that a large portion of the people that buy tickets for a TakeOver WrestleMania weekend show are people that buy tickets because they're going to go watch the NXT TakeOver show. I would bet that a large portion of this crowd does not watch the weekly television show. And I think that's part of the reason that they did not care about Tatum Paxley at all. They probably had no fucking idea what was going on. And in this match here... Elia from the opening bell is selling his fingers and he's going for moves, but he sells his fingers. And so the move gets botched. You know, it's an on purpose botch. He tries to lift, drops him, tries to do something, grabs it. And like, I think that most of the people in the crowd had no fucking idea what was going on. It's not like Tony worked over his fingers at the opening bell. And then he's it's like from the opening bell. He's screwing stuff up and selling his fingers. So then there's a long heat segment. Same thing. This match was like 17 minutes. Heat forever. I think Tony D is fantastic playing his character. But in the ring, bell to bell, he has no in-ring charisma. He is a guy wearing pants and a wife beater doing a solid match. This did not feel like a world championship match. It's not in the main event position. It was just like... It was good wrestling, but that's all it was. It was not, oh my God, this is the big WrestleMania weekend championship match. Didn't feel like that at all. The fans didn't react to it at all. And, you know, Elia won. I, I, I mean, I thought he worked well, but it didn't connect with the crowd in any way. You mentioned the reason people who do not watch the TV show would be disinterested in this match. If you do watch the TV show, you're probably still disinterested because you mentioned there was a long heat segment. It was Ilya getting the heat on Tony D. Yes. The mobster who we have seen commit major multiple felonies, multiple major felonies, who the buildup to this program was he repeatedly kidnapped Ilya and threatened him with murder and or torture. They get the heat on him. And he's like trying to fight back from underneath and get sympathy. And Stax is trying to pass in the nux. And Tony D says, no, I don't want it that way. And they're talking, man, this Tony D is noble. This stand-up dude. This mobster who we're supposed to be cheering for, for doing things the right way. And there's a point later where uh, Dragunov like, he's got some, he starts elbowing Tony in the back of the neck and right in front of the family. And Stax jumps in the apron again. And Tony D suddenly like springs up and says, no, don't do this. I want to do it my way. I'm like, well, if you want to do it, you can start right now. Elbow that Russian guy who's hitting you over and over again. <laughs> Fight back. Don't talk to your buddy. So the whole thing just completely lost me. And uh, towards the end, they're outside the ring. And they look at each other. And they decide together, let's prepare this announce desk. And then have a big fight to see who can put each other through it. That got by far the biggest reaction of the entire match. And Tony tried to powerbomb him through the table. Ilya escaped. Hit an H-bomb on the floor. Hit an H-bomb through the table. They did a few more stu things in the ring. But in the end, Tony could never get his finish. Ilya hit Torpedo Moscow. And the Super H-bomb. And he just won. Yeah. This was on the very, very low end of Ilya Dragunov main event matches. Yes. Had a Javon Evans hype video. He's 19. He's very happy. He's flying around a lot on Level Up. He'll debut on Tuesday. And he takes off his mic, stands up and says, that was dope. <laughs> this guy, this guy is overflowing with charisma. And what's that show that they that they do that's on the internet? Love, uh, level, level Up? Or, spe or Speed? It's, I'm talking about Level Up. Okay. I don't watch Level Up, but I know people who do. And... Um, you know Bronco Nima? I do. You watch Bronco Nima and it's like, this fucking guy. Like, he's a good worker. I mean, for his experience level, he's a good worker. He looks great. His promos are awesome. And he's got size. 
And how many times have I said, you cannot, like, you have to be completely incompetent to fuck it up with this guy. Like, he's a surefire main eventer. Well, I have had people, he's obviously not, he doesn't have the size, but they've said the same thing about this Javon Evans. Right. They're like, this guy is unbelievable. And unless you're a complete incompetent, he is going to be a big, big star. So I'm very excited to see his debut. Metaphor's fancy suits. They announced the NXT attendance record, which I bet is legit. Main event, Trick Williams versus Carmelo Hayes. Now, before we review the match, I'm not going to go on the big rant again. I have no idea why this wasn't for the title. Well, now that it's all said and done, man, you are so totally right. Yeah, and, <laughs> and you know, I even, I even the funniest thing is I had an argument today with somebody in WWE about this, okay? And their argument was, Trick is probably getting called up to the main roster Monday. Why would you put up why would you put the title on a guy who's being called up to the main roster Monday? And so someone else in this thread was like, Isn't Braun Breaker a main roster guy? And their response was, Well, yeah, he's got an NXT title with his his tag team partner. I'm like, is that not the exact same fucking thing? Trick would have an NXT title and be on the main roster. The fuck's the problem with any of this? He can lose it later, do a fucking three-way, you don't beat him if you don't want to beat him, whatever. But like, how... Okay, so forget that, all right? Forget that. Let's just say whatever. Why did this not have a stip? I, that, I don't know. I was fucking furious as throughout this match, they kept saying over and over, Ava has asked the ref to please show some leniency. She has declared... That she must have a winner. And it's like, so fucking make it a there must be a winner match. No holds barred. A no DQ. A street fight. Street fight. No holds barred. False Lights counts, out. Anywhere. Yeah, anything. What, like, what in the fuck? And they keep bringing it up over and over. And now that it's over, I don't have any, like, I have no earthly idea why they couldn't have put a stip on this. There was nothing in this match. That necessitated normal pro wrestling rules. They fucking used chairs. Yes. They brawled in the crowd. Yes. They, uh, I mean, fucking th multiple everything. Multiple nut you, shots. Multiple nut shots. Everything that you would do in a no DQ match must be a winner. Fucking whatever. They did all of that, and all we get is Vic saying over and over, "Well, the ref must show leniency." I'm like, fuck off. And as a result. Like, this match had heat, okay? It had better heat than a lot of stuff earlier. Did not have as much heat as the opener or the three-way. And again, part of it was, this did not feel like the payoff no. to a storyline that has been going on for over a year. Yes. At minimum, you needed a stipulation, especially if it's true and the guy's getting called up Monday the fuck did you end the feud with a normal match for at minimum you needed a stipulation and at best you should add a stipulation and the title on the line as it was all these fans watching no stipulation announced if they don't watch tv they're like you know I, we like chanting whoop that trick but i mean why is this the main event no stip asking their friends why is there i don't know why there's no stip i don't know what the fuck's going on and they just do a match and Bunch of shit happens, and then it's not even like a real decisive win for Trick. That, that's it's the like biggest thing. Carmelo me. gets a chair, the ref takes it, Trick hits the knee and pins him. It's almost a fluke. Yeah, I'm like, what in the fuck was this? This was one. Of, this was why I think I said the show was confusing because this match confused me greatly. From the reason there was, it was not. What well, was the main event? The reason there was no stip, I don't know. In hindsight, why was this not a title match? I don't know. Why was it laid out the way it was? I don't know. This felt like the first match in a feud. Yes. Very much so. So the the story of the match is, I had, you know, Shawn Michaels is in charge of this company. I had very strong Shawn Diesel vibes going on, where the smaller man is through superior speed and technique and uh, uh, wily and wily wily cunningness dominates the entire match. Melo took eighty percent of this thing, and they kept teasing a trick comeback, but he had like one move and they got cut off again. And you're waiting for this big comeback, and you're waiting. And you're waiting, and you're waiting, and the refs are getting bumped, and they're doing nut shots, and there's chairs in there, and you're waiting, and you're waiting, and you're waiting, and suddenly Trick just hits a move and wins. It seems like the last five minutes of this match were missing. 
I don't know, man. I was. I mean, I thought the wrestling was good. That's like the thing on this Mello show. Mello looked like, awesome in this match. If you just look at the wrestling matches, yes, like it was a very good show. But bro, I'm not just watching wrestling for wrestling matches. If I wanted to, fuck, it's WrestleMania weekend. Like everything needs to have more than just here's two guys having a great wrestling match in a vacuum. What's the story? What like what's what are the stipulations? The stakes. You know, you're watching this match, and I loved the feud. I loved Trick and Carmel and everything, but, like, you're watching the match, and what are the stakes? None. You think those fans just bought a ticket to NXT over Mania Weekend just to see Trick get a pinfall? That's they they wanted more. That's what they got. They've been investing a year into this, and and they got he got his hand raised. Like, he gets his hand raised on TV. Yeah, he got his hand raised over Carmelo, but... It just needed so much more, and I think it was worse because I think everybody saw how easily they could have added so much more. It was like they deliberately made this harder than it needed to be, and so as a viewer who loves NXT, it was greatly frustrating to have fucked something up so badly. But and such is life. That's what they did. So that was the show. I didn't hate the show. I know you listen to this and you think <laughs> I hated the show. Yeah. I honestly really didn't. But I was frustrated. It's it's, it's a, much a, very frustrated as I watched this show. A thumbs up show that should have been a two thumbs up show. Yes. So yes. so so the thumbs up feels like a letdown. What was a unique hairstyle worn by men in the sixties? Mop and conk, whatever what? that is. I beg your pardon. Excuse <laughs> mop, me. Cock and, and pump. Conk. Say that yeah, one more time. Nobody else talk. Pop and conk. Yeah. Are you sure, Granny? <laughs> Read it again. Mep O P Mop Comma Conk. Mop Conk. Mop Conk? Conk. C O N K. Look it up. All right. Mop Conk. Mop Conk. That's two different things. I know. <laughs> God damn it. Duh. <laughs> Why is she mad at us? Because <laughs> we're idiots. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.